8728 Mossdale Drive. Centoya said she called because she wanted him found, and she didn't like the idea of him laying there all alone. Richard Reed hadn't necessarily believed her story, but when he and Sam saw the news and the report of a dead man in his home, he told Sam what Centoya had confessed to. They decided to spend the night elsewhere. Whether Richard knew this or not, Sam called the police, who interviewed him, finding out where they could locate Centoya. When they stormed her room, she loudly voiced that Cutthroat didn't have anything to do with Johnny Allen's murder, which is really not the case at all. Sixteen-year-old Centoya was interrogated without legal representation. Issues swirled around whether she understood her rights before talking. Only some portions of her confession are taped, one section beginning with Centoya inquiring as to the clarity of the deal she said they kept promising her. Those confession issues linger all the way into her trial, as she was clearly and admittedly under the influence during her interrogation. Her speech is slurred, and then she sets her head down on the table more than once. Some of the harsh attitudes that the detectives had against Centoya seemed to revolve around her intoxicated actions that night and her immature reactions to her situations. She misidentified herself as 18-year-old Centoya Mitchell. Police discovered her true name and age after she was fingerprinted, but also after she was interrogated. Given her behavior that night, Centoya was transferred to Western Mental Health Institute for a psych evaluation. Borderline personality disorder first arose as a potential diagnosis at this point. However, Centoya was too young to be formally diagnosed. Her behavior at the hospital was violent and irrational. She tore a light fixture down from the ceiling and a vent out of the wall in the span of one day. Dosing with Thorazine and a four-point restraint came right after she told a nurse, I shot that man in the back of the head and bitch I'm going to shoot you three times in the back of the head and would love to see your blood splatter on the wall. So we've heard about Centoya and even a bit about Cutthroat, but what about Johnny Allen, the murder victim that local newspapers quickly said may have been a good Samaritan? due to a few statements made by friends saying he had a soft spot for helping the homeless. A few neighbors said he was nice and quiet and had lived alone in the house for the past two years, and that was about it. The media seemed to find themselves in a tough spot, fumbling for a different frame in which to place the portrait of a 43-year-old murder victim killed while he was naked in bed with a child. And I guess they gave up. At Centoya's murder trial beginning August 21, 2006, Prosecutors stressed that although she said she thought he was reaching for a gun, there was no gun anywhere near Johnny Allen's side of the bed, just a full magazine on the nightstand. The defense countered by calling not one, but two women, one who had been a 17-year-old waitress at the time of her incident, to the stand to paint a picture of Johnny Allen. The second woman testified to a horrifying story of a first date gone wicked, ending in her rape in his home. She felt at fault as though she had made herself too available even against her own better judgment. She hadn't called the police then and did not want to testify later. She only did so when subpoenaed. Sintoya's old acquaintance Richard Reed told his story under oath as well. However, his old roommate Sam had been murdered just months after that fateful meeting with detectives. Centoya didn't testify, nor did Vanderbilt University forensic psychologist William Burnett, who was hired by the defense and is featured heavily throughout the Independent Lens documentary. He did not have the opportunity to testify that he supported a possible diagnosis of borderline personality disorder as well. This means that the jury in Centoya's murder trial did not hear about the myriad possible components of the disorder, including an overwhelming desire to impress others, paranoia, wild mood swings, and extreme impulsivity. The jury did not hear Centoya testified to having a sexual relationship with Cutthroat, who was 23 years old at the time of Johnny Allen's murder. They heard nothing of her family history of suicidal tendencies, mental illness, or homicidal thoughts. Nothing at all about the amount of alcohol Gina drank while pregnant or the possibility of Centoya being somewhere on the fetal alcohol syndrome spectrum. When I got pregnant, I was I was drinking, um, and even after my pregnancy, I still drank on a daily basis. Having a newborn, and I was a child myself, I couldn't handle it, so I would escape to the bottle. I drank for about eight months of her life, and 
uh, the eighth month. That's when I was introduced to crack cocaine. All of these aspects of her defense were not properly fleshed out during her five-day trial. After a six-hour jury deliberation, she was found guilty on all counts and sentenced to life in prison, a technical term of 60 years in Tennessee. Attorneys who viewed the documentary did file an appeal on her behalf where they were able to bring forth all the evidence regarding the borderline personality disorder and fetal alcohol syndrome, but the original sentence was upheld. At a clemency hearing held in May of 2018, the parole board was unable to deliver a unanimous recommendation to Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam regarding which act of clemency could be appropriate in this situation. Two voted for full clemency, two for no clemency, and two for parole eligibility after 25 years. Centoya had also filed suit in response to her life sentence, saying it was unconstitutional for a juvenile. And just last month, on December 8, 2018, the Tennessee Supreme Court clarified that Centoya's sentence was not unconstitutional because she technically has a chance at parole after serving 51 years. Per Tennessee law, a life sentence is 60 years, which could be reduced by 15% or 9 years, making the inmate eligible for parole within a natural lifetime. Any juvenile justice reform that has been occurring since Centoya was convicted has no bearing on her sentence because of this. Executive clemency granted by the governor was looking more and more like her last and only hope for a reduction in sentence. The petition toward clemency exploded unexpectedly just before Thanksgiving 2017 when the singer Rihanna posted to Instagram about Centoya's case. It had been 13 years since the murder of Johnny Allen and more than seven years since the Independent Lens documentary premiered on PBS. Accompanying the post was a photo of 16-year-old Centoya in pigtails at her juvenile transfer hearing in 2004, although at that time she was actually 29 years old. Kim Kardashian tweeted about her that day, too, and before you knew it, many people who had never even given juvenile justice a thought were rallying behind her early release. Rihanna ended her post with the hashtag FreeCentoyaBrown, which quickly went viral. Then, just a week and a half after the gut punch of the Supreme Court decision, Governor Haslam granted acts of executive clemency to 11 inmates, none of whom were 30-year-old Centoya Brown. But then, unexpectedly, on Monday, January 7, 2019, Governor Haslam commuted Centoya's sentence to 15 years, setting her release date as August 9, 2019. He made the following statement. This decision comes after careful consideration of what is a tragic and complex case. Centoya Brown committed, by her own admission, a horrific crime at the age of 16, yet Imposing a life sentence on a juvenile that would require her to serve at least 51 years before even being eligible for parole consideration is too harsh, especially in light of the extraordinary steps Miss Brown has taken to rebuild her life. Transformation should be accompanied by hope, so I am commuting Miss Brown's sentence subject to certain conditions. Nashville Mayor David Briley issued this statement about the announcement. I am deeply grateful to Governor Haslam for his decision to commute the sentence of Centoya Brown today. He has yet again demonstrated that mercy, redemption, and forgiveness have an important place in our democracy and criminal justice system. This is a great day for social justice and our city. Senator Brenda Gilmore, Senator Katrina Robinson, Representative London Lamar, District Attorney David Funk, and Black Lives Matter Nashville also publicly released statements commending the governor's decision. Cutthroat was never investigated for any statutory rape or sex trafficking allegations related to living at the in-town suites with and sexually abusing a minor. Age of consent under Tennessee law was 18. He was murdered in the parking lot of the Courtyard Cafe in the early morning hours of March 30, 2005 between Centoya's juvenile transfer hearing and the start of her murder trial. The woman cutthroat had paralyzed Nancy Browning, carried on with her life as best as she could, considering the pain and hardships she endured, even returning to college. Sadly, Nancy Browning passed away in Nashville, November 9, 2018. 
As always, thanks for joining me and welcome to 2019, lovelies. Join me next time as I sit down and tell the story of Antonio Esprit, a juvenile lifer who was released in 2017 after spending 29 years incarcerated in Michigan. But until then, lovelies, don't be scared. Stay tuned for the promo for the new podcast, Exploiting Vicky Timms. Hey, it's Chris from Killer Jobs, and I wanted to let you know that I'm producing a new podcast that debuts this week. It's called Exploiting Vicky Timms, and it's a true crime parody podcast that pokes fun at everything you love or hate about the big serial style true crime shows. The series follows host Yost Brittany as he investigates the death of a young woman in a small southern town. It's a fun and funny break from the serious subjects most shows cover. If you're a true crime fan, you'll appreciate all the nods to well-known podcasts and cases. You can subscribe now on any podcast player. Just look for Exploiting Vicky Thames.